So to start off, this locomotive project took me about a year to complete the fabrication of, and about five years for the planning and uh, design changes and experimenting that were required in order to uh, come up with the design that you see here. It's a relatively short time being as many people that are in the uh, live steam or small engine hobby take a very long time to build their uh, their projects. They're spending a lot more time in terms of attaining uh, accuracy and uh, detail to a specific scaled down locomotive. Whereas this, it's not exactly based off of any full size engine. Its design largely comes from uh, German Feldbahn locomotives, which are narrow gauge industrial and uh, agricultural railways. So it's, um, again, not supposed to really be a scaled down version of something large. It's a full size engine just on 15 inch gauge. So I guess that's enough about the uh, overall design. Let's get into some specifics here is that um, the uh, main body is made out of quarter inch plate. So all of these angles and plates here are quarter inch thick. And at this size, which is about 26 inches by about five feet, is that I found that I needed every bit of that strength is I was going to go with lighter materials. So just eighth inch plate. But as uh, again, with previous design experiments, the uh, proved flimsy and uh, a step up to such thick plate was required. And so once I had the frame done, I had to figure out how to set this frame, which is a, uh, all of the inside here is an old riding mower. So that's the, uh, that's the secret in terms of what is actually under this thing's hood. And with the construction photos that I'll go through later, I can go more into detail, but it's a 16 horsepower gasoline engine that is belt driven through this clutch pedal here. That's a clutch and a brake. And it goes to a transmission down there, which is a transaxle actually. It has a differential in it, but I am not using the differential. And it is simply then taken with a sprocket off of the transaxle here and goes to the rear axle and drives the rear axle which then is of course uh, linked to the front axle via a uh, sprocket and chain there. The brake is this tall lever here and has a ratchet for a parking brake so it can be pulled off by that lever and set back on just by pushing. And let's get another shot of that. Of the... So as you can see, the uh, there's a little pin here that rides on the, uh, on the rack and keeps the brakes in place. That in turn goes down to a lever you can see this lever here, which then goes forward and pulls on this bar here, which then comes out to this block and uh, presses against these springs. And this bar slides and pulls on each of the four brake shoes, which are just a block of wood on a hanger that goes up to these tie rods across there, which also in fact supports the brake lever. Now the springs are there simply so that when you can, when you put tension on it with the parking brake, there's a constant pressure on the brake shoes and it doesn't lock up. That The pedestals are made up out of pieces of angle iron that are riveted onto the main plates here. The main plates have a cutout that follows the pedestal cavity for the springs and um, they of course have a, have a uh, tie bar across the bottom to keep the uh, bearing block in place. Now the bearing blocks are regular square pillow blocks 
for um, any shaft or any applications. And looking at the uh, wheels under here is that the wheels are 11 inch diameter cast iron wheels that I purchased from a uh, seller on eBay that cast replica minecart wheels and um, they've proved they've proved quite useful they are uh, quite heavy they needed a little bit of machining to get onto the axles but I will get into that more in the uh, discussion of the construction taking a look at the couplers we have a link and hook design with a central buffer. Something like a knuckle coupler is uh, a little bit too complicated to make simply out of uh, just flat plates welded together so I went with this type and I've seen this again on um, on Feldbond locomotives. I could have gone with a uh, link and pin coupler but which are a little bit simpler but I thought that this look nicer and uh, feel a little bit better with the uh, rest of the engine. As for the control panel here, we have our main on-off switch, which brings on the controls and the starter motor. This is our starter switch, so depressing this button cranks the motor to uh, turn over the engine to get it started. This is our kill switch, so this simply uh, shuts off the engine whenever you're done running. Down here is the throttle. These are headlights and this is the switch for the air compressor. Now the compressor over here is simply for the air horns. I do not have uh, any other real use for the um, for the air compressor but I uh, I didn't have a bell and uh, or a whistle, and so in keeping with the theme of uh, a uh, gasoline or diesel locomotive, I figured that air horns were a uh, were a good option. And also, my uh, I had a friend that was getting rid of these, and so I said, "Hey, I could uh, I could use them, and I saved them for a while before putting them on here." So that is just operated by a uh, mechanical valve, and again, you have your pressure here they generally work well on about 50 pounds but they uh, they do let out quite a lot of air and the tiny little compressor in here if you can see that doesn't keep up very well so you get about one good blast and then you have to wait for it to charge back up the headlamp here is uh, just a generic tractor headlight that I also got on eBay it was new, but the styling fit, so it was, uh, I selected it, and uh, there it is. It works quite well, but I think the battery's actually dead. Actually, let's, let's test that. So, control on and light on. Nope, it still works. Maybe let's test the crank. Well, it cranks, so the battery isn't dead, but I know that there's not fuel in it, so we're not going to run it right now. If you, if you want to see it run, there's other videos of it running, but I, I still do not have the track for that, unfortunately. Taking a look at this, we have our gas tank, which is also just repurposed from the riding mower. And another recycled element is the exhaust stack here which is a uh, exhaust pipe from a uh, 64 Oldsmobile so a lot of nice uh, recycled parts here the uh, tractor seat was new but also just from eBay so a lot of eBay parts a lot of recycled parts so that's the overview of the features and uh, elements of this locomotive and uh, now let's get into the uh, pictures of the assembly process. I began by turning the axles out of inch and a half cold rolled round bar. 
I turned the shoulder to keep the wheels at gauge and reduce one inch diameter ends for the bearings. Here's a short clip of the turn. I then cut quarter inch keyways in the axles by way of horizontal milling. Wheel keyways were cut by using the lathe as a shaper to cut the internal slots. Here one of the two axle sets has been completed. Five ace holes are drilled for the rivets that will hold the frame together. Bolts are used temporarily as fixturing. Four inch plate boxes were welded, drilled, and tapped to act as support blocks for the bearings, which are affixed with bolts. These two photos show early frame fixturing. Here the coupler takes shape from pieces of quarter inch plate, springs, hooks, and chain. This is the riding mower frame, with most everything taken off for cleaning and preparation for installation. With the two frames affixed, the engine and transmission are installed. After controls were finalized, it was ready for a test run in this state. After a successful trial, I packed up and moved the engine to my studio at school to continue work at their shop facilities. I purchased these 5 a's rivets to replace the temporary bolts. After disassembling the frame, I began the process of riveting all of the plates and angles together. They were far from perfect, but adequate to hold. After reassembling the frame, I began work on the engine housing. It is largely made from 16 gauge sheet metal with expanded metal and louver panels to allow airflow for the engine. Here the engine is mechanically finished, time for paint. The paint of choice is Rust-Oleum and Animal in black, red, light gray, and a custom mix of maroon. Here's a view of the driver's seat, freshly painted and finished. It was meant to be shown at my school for my thesis project, but unfortunately that was canceled, so I lugged it home last April. It's been about a month or two of my front lawn attracting interested onlookers before I moved it, with some difficulty, to the track out back where it currently resides, waiting for the new track so it can run again. So that about covers the process of building this locomotive that has been rather central to the railway project, but hasn't quite been given the attention that I owe of it. This is one of the larger projects I've done, and of course the uh, rest of the railway is part of it. So when I have more of the new line laid down, you can expect to see more of this engine and hopefully uh, running and back in service. If you're looking to build your own narrow gauge line, I hope that this video serves as an inspiration and that it doesn't have to be scale accurate or be built from expensive components to be a proper railway. Let me know of any other questions you have about this project in the comments and I'll give them as best an answer as I can. And of course, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more railway videos.